The poem that I'm going to read comes out of my experience as a child of a disabled veteran. I read in the paper last week that we are seeing one suicide per day among our soldiers. Post-traumatic stress is a new epidemic among returning soldiers. So when I think of Flag Day, I don't just think of those who lost their lives in the war. I also think of those who take their lives because of the trauma of war and those who live with psychological scars because of the war for the rest of their lives. And it's to this that moves me to write this poem called This Flag. I'd like to start with an epigram from the, the 2006 Poet Laureate, Rick Tuttle. How to tell the difference between a flag and a poem. All right, babe. A flag is about defending your borders. A poem is about exploding them. This flag. I got a small flag in the mail from the Wounded Warrior Project, and Jackson is marching up and down the stairs waving it, my sister tells me. We both laugh. Jackson, her grandson, my great nephew, has skin like snow white, blue eyes like Wedgwood China, and full red lips. We both adore his thoughtful little gaze, the way his heart makes his legs skip, skip, skip to my loo. His dad, a man of quiet virtue, is a college basketball coach. When his dad was young, his brother and father both died. He scrawled an essay in tiny cursive about Plato, death, and the Republic. At basketball games, they unveil the flag and everyone stops for a moment to look up. And Jackson watches. At two and a half, he does not yet know what we wish to forget when we hold our hand over our heart. The bombs bursting in air, songs so childlike, it may as well be a Disney song about fireworks or wishing upon a star. The oozing rocket's red glare, stripes and stars the color of sheep. Blue hearts of families sent flags instead of bodies they wish had come home. And what of giving proof through the night? The buzzer wails and jars everyone back into the gymnasium's roars and echoes, balls bouncing, referees and whistles, fans shouting and jeering. The game ends. Someone wins. Someone loses. Jackson will carry the memory in his DNA that his great-great-grandmother died making weapons in a munitions plant that his great-great-grandfather died hallucinating in a VA hospital, and that his great-grandfather was permanently disabled by soldier's heart, battle fatigue, now bleached simply into the acronym PTSD. In Girl Scouts before I knew the war stories of my father, I watched the flag get carefully folded over and over again into unimaginable triangles I could never learn to do. Uniformed men played taps on the trumpets while the flag's pulley clanged rhythmically against the metal pole in the wind. We were giving something a name that had no name. I knew that whatever this thing was, it meant that I belonged to something bigger than myself. I knew it had something to do with my roots in this land. As I stood motionless, I knew that even in church, 
Reverend silences were rarely this long. Since moving from my own place of birth, I understand the connection to an imprinted landscape that one never forgets. The soil that one would fight to protect like a child. Our bones are knit from horizons and skylines, speckled with roofs and clouds and our very own birds. And yet when those birds fly, do they see the margins of a country, a line that marks who is in and who is out? After Navajo code talkers helped World War II to end, these sheep herders quietly returned without honor to the barren, dusty reservation their ancestors were forcibly marched to while guns were being held to their heads. What republic did Betsy Ross dream of? As a child, her stories became as real as my own family history. I imagined her, an old maiden aunt, no husband or children, the flag her only legacy. Moons on her fingernails moved in silent patterns over stained linen and hemp, threading and stitching in and out of coarse fibers, the pull and tug piercing again and again. Sometimes she sat solitary by the fire, sometimes on an old milking stool in the corner of her kinsman's house, wanting the noise of children to chase her loneliness away. She never looked up. Her fingers were thinking, what next? What next? All the time, holding those stars in her lap. A few blocks from my house, a man holds a sign, Homeless Vet. It is hot. His face is red. He is in a wheelchair. One foot without toes is shoeless, swollen with sun and infection, the skin chapped and scaly. He tells me as he is recovering from bone cancer that the shrapnel I see jutting out of his leg has been there since the war. He was recently arrested for trespassing, spent three months in jail, and lost his bed at the homeless center. Without an address, his VA benefits stopped, and now he waits on street corners to ask for help until his check comes. Where are you sleeping, I ask. On the ground, he says. I remember from Girl Scouts, never let the flag touch the ground. I empty my pocket, but he refuses the 50 cents. It's not much but a cup of coffee. I shove it into his clawed hand. I received a Congressional Medal of Honor, he replies. I went to Washington and spit on Nixon's shoes and I gave it back to him. He tells me this story three times. The next day he is gone. And that night, I dream about his trailing white beard, his soft blue eyes, the red sun swollen on his skin. And I drift back to another decorated soldier I knew. He never recovered from the stories about the father, the woman, and the brains he cupped in his hands from the empty skull. Willie grew his fingernails long slept under my car in the heat, and wore bottle caps as rings he found in street gutters. This flag of blood red poppies and ghosts of winged blue herons belongs to everyone, 
and is owned by no one. This wingless flapping waves and snaps and breaks. This human heart singing endures in the wind, taking life and giving life. From the moon under which we were all born lies a planet whose territories commingle. A home that shivers with bear and python and shiny salmon. A home where each country has its own rocks and birds and drums that sing in their very own tongue. When a land is free, when a land is brave, it shimmers like a parade in a small Michigan town and catches a tidal wave of fallen stars animated by one breath. That is what I will try to tell Jackson when he is older. Thank you.